Hi there, and welcome to another video tutorial from Cornflower Iris. Today I'll be making this fun and funky card for Father's Day with a flip-flop design. To begin with, I cut a piece of A4 300 GSM cardstock to 11.5 inches by 5 and 3 quarters, and then scored this at 5 and 3 quarter inches to make a square card base. Using a T ruler, I measured halfway across the front of the card and then drew a faint line in pencil. This is going to help with some partial die cutting to make the flip-flop card design. I decided to go with a stitch circle for the centre. This, I felt, really added a fresh and funky look to the card. To die cut this, I used the XK Express machine with the cutting plate on the bottom, the die facing the bottom so I could see it, and then align the base plate with the pencil line. This means that only half the circle is cut from the cardstock. By scoring across the pencil line and folding this back, we're able to achieve a really crisp flip-flop design that works like this. Don't forget to erase the pencil lines afterwards. I'm using this paper pad just for men in brights by Crafters Companion and selecting three different pattern papers and then cutting these to five and three quarter inches each. This is going to help align everything with the circle. So I'm lining this up and then putting the circle die in where I want the circle to be. This is because the circle won't be perfectly aligned in the centre, but all these pieces are going to be perfectly aligned with each other by taking these precautions. To cut from the red paper, I simply place this in the recess, take the two pieces of paper together and run this through the machine. Everything will now be perfectly aligned. To help with lining up the papers, I drew around a circle and then snipped off the excess and apply the pieces of paper with some tape on. This type of card does take a little bit extra time in terms of spending time aligning everything and making sure everything is perfectly cut to precision, but I feel this time is worth it because this card has a really fun and fresh design. I'm using lots of very bold pattern papers, but I'm choosing the colours onto the yellow paper to make everything tie in together and not clash. I'm now applying some paper to the back of the front of the card so that when it's standing on a table, if you look from the side, it doesn't look blank and unfinished. It's got some texture to it. This really finishes off the design. I'm now stamping this very cute monkey stamp in Memento Ink five times and then I'm colouring it in with some Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. I'm using three different shades of marker, TM2 for the insides of the ears and the stomach, TN3 for the base of the monkey's body, and TN4 for some shadows on the monkey's body. I'm simply going over with the lightest colour, TN3, adding TN4 where the shadow should be. I'm not doing much complicated shading here, just adding some shade to the left hand side and where there would naturally be shade, and then blending this back out with a TN3 marker. I'm colouring all of the monkeys in exactly the same way. I'll show you how I coloured this first one. Once they were all coloured in, I fussy cut them out using a pair of tonic Tim Holtz scissors. The fussy cutting and colouring take quite a while, but I feel it's really worth it for this card and to achieve a bit of extra dimension. I'm fussy cutting straight to the black lines, and the best way to do this is to hold your scissors almost still and rotate the paper. This helps you get into all those little crevices. This card is also the scrap from the card base, so it's 300 GSM. This means that the tail and the arms and legs are going to be quite strong and not likely to rip off very easily, but still take care not to bend them. After cutting out, I went around the edges with a memento marker in tuxedo black. This matches the ink used to stamp the monkey design, and it also hides any white paper edges and any areas where my fuzzy cutting wasn't perfect. This is a really important step as it really helps make the images stand out from the background and it also hides any mistakes. So I did the same for all of the monkeys and then it's a case of simply aligning them on the card. 
I thought they looked really cute, kind of hanging on to each other on the left hand side of the front. And I popped them up with some foam tape for a bit of dimension. Just adding a foam pad to the back of the body, because the arms and legs are strong enough to stun them around. I did make a box envelope for this card there, just so they wouldn't get squished. With a cute design like this, it's really worth taking some time to align everything so that they look like they're doing something with the card. I applied some pattern paper that I cut to five and a half inches square, and then I'm putting the monkeys in and aligning them because I'm planning on putting another circle inside. To put the monkeys on the inside, I'm gluing them flat using a glue pen and making sure to apply glue everywhere and pushing on really firmly. So they look really cute, like one's hanging from the edge of the card, peering at the inside, and another's hanging off the edge of the circle. To align the circle perfectly in the middle of the card, simply place it in the front and close the card. It's a neat little trick. I'm now using some jet black archival ink and stamping go bananas at the bottom of the circle. And then using a tea ruler, I'm marking this front circle into three segments to help me spell out Happy Father's Day with a alphabet stamp set. I'm using archival ink because it's a bit darker than memento ink and I'm not going to be putting any alcohol markers near it. And it also stands out better against this dark pattern paper. To finish off that circle, I'm adding some vines in cottage ivy ink from memento and then complementing this on the red pattern paper inside with just a couple more vines. And that's the card basically done. Not forgetting to erase the pencil lines, of course. To make the envelope, I'm using some 12 by 12 pattern paper that I'm cutting to 9 and 3 eighths of an inch square and then using the 123 punch board by We Are Memory Keepers, aligning it at four and a half inches and then punching and scoring, as usual. This is a 250 TSM cardstock, so it holds its shape really well in a box. To put the envelope together, I've put some 6x6 embossing folders inside, just so it gives me something to push onto. And then I'm using some red liner tape on the sides, just to stick everything together. Red liner tape is really strong, so this means the box isn't going to come apart. To decorate the envelope, I'm using another stitch circle in craft cardstock to complement the inside of the card, and then wrapping everything in natural string four times and tying a knot. This holds the envelope closed, as well as adding a decorative element. And that's the card for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe got a little bit inspired. You can check out the blog post for much more detail. I'll be back very soon with a video demonstrating how to decorate a wooden box for Father's Day. If you did like the video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my other videos, including another Father's Day card in a very different style. I'll leave a link in the i button on the top right of the video. I'll leave you with some stills. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.